Hi, everybody. Welcome. I'm Hillary Ramo, and you're listening to Matters for Mind, Body, and Spirit Talk Radio. While many wait and hold their breath for 2012, few people think about the implications of what the calendar means today. Joining me the next for the next hour is Mind Calendar researcher and author Barbara Hand Clow for a dialogue about the Mind Calendar in general and the significance of the opening of what is called the Night Six of the Galactic Underworld which lasts from November 7th, 2009 to November 2nd, 2010. Day 6 of the Galactic Underworld, which is November 12th, 2008 to November 7th, 2009, which is called the fruition phase. And, uh, and she'll be discussing speculations about what will happen in 2010. Barbara is the author of The Mind Code, Time Acceleration and Awakening the World Mind, and one of my favorites, Alchemy of Nine Dimensions. And she joins us again tonight to discuss this very, very valuable information. With the release of the new movie, 2012, there's a lot of talk about what's going to be happening at this time frame. And uh, if you're just listening for the first time to one of Barbara's shows, she has two shows in my archives that gives a little bit of a background to the cycles of the Mayan calendar. And I highly suggest, because we won't be covering that basic information tonight, that after the show you go back and listen to those archives so you get a general idea. And also uh, her book, The Mind Code, is one of the best uh, book resources that I have found on this topic, too. So between the two shows and the book, you guys should be brought up to speed. But tonight I'm really excited about this show. I've had a lot of people um, emailing me and asking me for this information. Um, and so here we are. Welcome, Barbara. Hi, Hillary. How are you? I'm and, doing um, great. <laughs> and I'm not surprised people are after this information because for me, you know, I've been going along by the nights and days of the Galactic Underworld, which started in 1999. So I've had like four years now of knowing what phase we were in. And with the entry into night, five, night six, um, I never have felt anything so palpable as the energy shift. And therefore, because I could feel it so intensely, um, therefore, I feel like my understanding of it is, is quite advanced. And what we're in the middle of now is just simply astonishing and extraordinary, and it's great to have a chance to talk about it. Well, what I'd like to do and what we've been doing uh, is bringing you on the show at key turning points for the calendar. So I want to let people know that are listening right now that we will be bringing Barbara back on throughout uh, different phases of the calendar up until, you know, the 2012 mark where she can discuss certain significant key points of the calendar. Um, so, Barbara, you know, it's interesting that you talk about the changes in the energy because I have certainly felt it myself. and. Uh, part of me has wanted to just really retreat and kind of go into this, you know, hibernation mode and really not do as much. Um, you know, we've all been sick here, and there's just been a lot of slow down motion. And and when I read, when I was rereading the description of the show we're doing about the fruition phase, you think, oh, go out and do and be and, and move, move, move. But what would you com- could you comment on that? Is that a, a typical thing, or is that just me in my life? <laughs> my well, right life? now. We're actually, day six is actually the flowering of the fruition phase is actually day seven, which comes in um, 20, late 2010 and 2011. So what happened during um, day six, which was basically this last year up until, um, up until November um, 7th, 8th, um, what happened during that phase, we went through this flowering phase where each one of us actually made a very, very significant um, a step in our evolutionary growth. And one of the things I'd like to get into um, today is, is to try to get a, hold, get a hold of that because you kind of have to understand what step you took forward because that now that we're into night six, we're into the balancing and the, the processing and the um, kind of, in some cases, backlash regarding the steps forward that we took. And so as soon as that energy came in, November 7th, November 8th, um, it, 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 it the same as you. Um, my immediate response to it was to slow down, draw back, and reassess everything. And as a matter of fact, that's absolutely the most important thing that anybody could do because, because um, that we're, we're, we're making growth steps at this point that are actually much greater and much more um, significant than we actually realize ourselves. And so if we can't take that time to assess it and deepen it and understand um, how it's functioning, um, we're, we're really going to be in trouble. This is not a time to go ripping forward figuring everything is going to be okay. 
Mm. And that's really what most people do instead of slowing down or they think there's something wrong with the slowing down aspect. But, um, okay, so we started then this night six began November 7th of this month, correct? Mm -hmm. That's right. And it goes through till November 2nd of next year. So let's just just kind of step back for a second for those people who are just joining in maybe for the first time. Um, When you say day six, um, what does that mean in terms of the calendar? Well, the calendar is com- is composed of a series of time cycles, and the primary time cycles uh, cycles are called, called um, nine underworlds. And the nine underworlds in the calendar actually go back to 16.4 billion years ago. And the nine underworlds describe um, the actual evolution of the universe and um, our spe- our planet and species from 16.4 billion years ago up through 2011 A.D. So then within each one of these um, nine underworlds, each one of these nine underworlds represents a different kind of evolutionary um, growth. Then within each one of them, they are divided up into 13 parts, which are called the seven days and the six nights. And what those days and nights represent is the stages of growth of each one of those nine underworlds. Because as you can imagine, if you're going to have a phase of growth, it's going to go through stages. And what happens with those is like day one is the sowing of an issue, day two is germination, day three is sprouting, day four is proliferation, day five is budding, and then we get up to day six, which is the actual flowering of um, the growth. And the growth phase that we're talking about at this moment is the eighth underworld, which is called the galactic underworld, which started in um, 1999 A.D., so we have come to the point of the flowering of all of the growth that we've been doing since 1999, and that's what these days and nights mean. And mm-hmm. now that we have um, gone through day six and taken a very radical step forward, now we're into the, the processing and the balancing of the steps forward that we have made. Okay, so when when somebody considers this information, let's talk about it from an individual point of view and then a collective point of view. Let's start with the individual yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. And from the, so, yeah, from, oh, from sorry, the individual. Ahead. Well, the interesting thing about it is, in this case, unlike a lot of other phases um, of, of experience in our universe, um, the you, the individual is actually the central key at this time, which is very interesting. Because now, first of all, the collective issue is very profound because the collective issue is going to give us a, um, a view into what the individual is struggling with, which I'll explain in a minute. But right now, it is profoundly individual, and one of the most important things for people to look at right now is for them to try to identify what step forward they made during day six, because actually everybody made one. And this whole period during day six has felt like a period of intense creativity, um, a, a lot of struggle, a lot of um, effort to move forward, and yet um, I know from an evolutionary perspective that everybody has actually taken a major step. So needless to say, since now we're into the, the uh, balancing and processing of that step, it's very important to identify that step. And for some people, it's, it's just a very simple thing. Um, a person may have, for the first time in their whole lives, worked in their garden and actually they may have actually seen the life force of their garden. One of my students, when I ask, I've been asking everybody this question now that we've come to the end of it, what step did you take? One of my students said that he finally learned how to putt well. Now that may seem silly and trivial, but putting is a very, golf is a very um, multi-dimensional game, and a person who finally can putt without, without being interfered with by their inner psychic forces they have actually moved beyond all the childhood and young adult um, limitations that they've been living with. And so this is actually a hugely significant step. It's just that somebody would think it's trivial. And so I think it's some people made big steps, you know, like what we call big steps. But for many people, this is just a small thing that has actually changed the whole way in which they're um, approaching their personal reality. Okay, so let me ask you this. So basically, should we go back and look at what we were doing on November 7th of this month around that weekend and see Um, what kind of changes? Yeah, we should actually be looking at what we did during the whole year. 
um, Hillary the during, whole during year. Um, okay. Yeah, the whole, whole year. year. Yeah, because because um, it, it, it it fortunately when people look at this, it does pop forth for them. So it's it's actually um, people actually are aware of the step forward they've taken, but they're not aware of it unless they look for it. If you know what I mean. And so if people look for for their step forward, um, they're going to be able to identify that. It might just be um, really loving their baby for the very first time. You know, achieving that point of love equaling what you always thought love for your baby would be, for example. And the reason this is so important is that night six basically has thrown us into what what um, mathematicians call the field of chaos. We are now in chaos. And the reason we're all feeling the way we're feeling is when you move into chaos, um, everything is so chaotic and going so fast and ripping in so many directions that you lose a sense of where you are. And yet the way chaos fields function mathematically is they're filled with a whole bunch of nodes, which mathematicians called, uh, call regions of peace or islands of opportunity. In other words, the whole field is made up of, of creative forces that, that we're working with. And what we need to do during um, a period of chaos is we need to stay with that field. You following me? Yeah. And yeah. As, as this intensifies... Um, whatever it was for people, they need to just stay with that almost like a life raft be- because the stuff that's go- going to be going on around people is going to be just totally incredible. And fortunately, because of what Dr. Kalaman has discovered about, about the influence of the Mayan calendar, fortunately, we can go back into other night sixes in order to identify like what might be going, you know, how this whole thing might be working out. And so one of the things that I think seems to help a lot is, first of all, it helps to go back into the day sixes to see what kind of steps forward we made in the past, if you know what I mean. Because if we can see that steps forward we made before, then as we look at this period of chaos, and then as we look into, like, what happened before, the whole thing is going to make more sense. In other words, just like with the individual, if you don't know the step forward you made, then you're going to be in chaos during night six, but, but just it's the same thing if you understand the step forward that you made. So I'd like to look at a couple of those if I can. Yeah, definitely. I'd, what I'd like to do is just look at a couple of the day sixes in the past just to get a sense of where we were before we went into night six. And all of the day sixes during the um, uh, uh, Mayan calendar are really extraordinary because each one of them shows evidence of a major um, step forward and a major flowering. And so these underworlds, as I told you, go back to 16.4 billion years. And so the oldest underworld, um, the cellular underworld, is 16.4 billion years long. And we came to day six at 3.8 to 2.5 billion years ago. And this is very interesting because this is the first point in the long cellular underworld where we have any planetary information because um, from a cosmological point of view, um, our solar system accreted right around four and a half billion years ago. So during day six, what happened was the minute day six opened, all of a sudden we find that the first um, single cell life appears on the planet. And so, in other words, during day six was when we achieved the evolution of the first cells. Then the next underworld is 800 million years long, and it's called the mammalian underworld. And when we get to day six, which is 120 to 190 million years ago, that's a million years ago now, um, what happened on our planet was at that time our planet was was a gigantic ocean with one huge continent, which was called Pangea. And when day six set in, Pangea started moving, which is which is called continental drift. And so what happened in day six was we had the first continental drift, which caused the um, continents to eventually formulate into the, the form that they're in now. And as the continents formed, in biology, um, we find in animals and species that brain lateralization started, which means for the first time we had a right and left brain um, developing. And without that brain lateralization, we could not have evolved to who we are now. Then we go back to the third underworld, which um, is uh, 41 million years long. 
And during day six, um, which was like six to nine million years ago, this was when we separated hominids from apes and chimpanzees. This is actually when we stood up in our evolutionary um, process, which needless to say is a huge deal, you know. Then we go back to the next underworld, which is two million years long, and we see the development of Neanderthal, who was who was a um, very advanced uh, right brain um, hominid um, who had very very much a, a wonderful dreaming kind of consciousness. Then just one more here before we switch. Um, then when we go into the regional underworld, which is a thousand one hundred thousand years long. Um, what we see is that day six is 23,000 to 15,000 years ago. And what we developed on the planet at that time was the global maritime civilization. And this is a little bit of an avant-garde perspective, but a whole bunch of archaeologists and anthropologists are willing to look at the idea that we once had an advanced um, civilization on this planet, which then, um, which then disappeared in a cataclysm. And, of course, this is called the whole idea of Atlantis. Okay, so I'm going to stop right there because then I think we want to switch around to night sixes. But as you can see, during those first five underworlds, we definitely made a, a gigantic step forward in the um, evolution of um, species in, in our universe. And that gives us a, a sense of that step. So we're looking at another evolutionary uh, jump, if you will, for our species. Then is that what, is that what we're, we should expect over the next year? Yeah. And, and well, in other words, okay. Now that's that's day six, which we just finished. So uh -huh. the idea there would be that we actually, as a collective, did achieve some kind of step forward. And the, the, what I'm finding right now is I'm finding that it's hard to identify the collective part of that, but what I'm looking for is the individual, the steps forward that the individual took. Be, because as you know, Hillary, one of the main theses of, of the Mayan Code, my 2007 book, is the idea that what we're evolving toward is becoming a peaceful species. In other, in other words, one of my main beliefs is that what we're actually evolving into is becoming a peaceful, um, self-reflective species. And so what seems to be going on right now is it all seems to be functioning on the individual level. And the reason for that is extremely interesting to me. As a matter of fact, I had a great conversation with my husband about this this morning where I talked with him about the idea that if we're going to evolve into a, a peaceful species, then each one of us as an individual has to become a pacifist. Hmm. Now, in, in, it's really interesting because in my case, I was all involved in the Vietnam War, anti-war demonstrations um, during the Vietnam War. And I was a counselor for, um, for a number of anti-draft organizations. And I was a mother with a young child. And to tell you the truth, I spent quite a few years doing things that could have thrown me in jail. Um, which was simply counseling uh, people for pacifism. But <laughs> one way or another, you could get into big trouble with that one, if you know what I mean. Yeah. And so dur during that period, which is now 40 years ago, I went through a very deep, deep immersion into what does it mean to really be a pacifist. And I am a true pacifist. Now, being a pacifist doesn't mean you can't defend yourself if you're walking down an alley and somebody tries to hit you or your kid or your husband. That's not what that means. You can defend yourself, hopefully without killing. Being a pacifist involves refusing to be involved in any kind of activity where any organization or other person can tell you to kill. Do you see the difference? Yeah, yeah. Okay. That's a good, that, that's okay. a good distinction. Thank you for clear. Yeah, that's definitely Yeah, good yeah. So, so it's only because I'm so deeply into it. So right now we have the United States um, government um, totally involved in the United States government has become as militaristic at this point as the Roman Empire was. And the resources of the people and the dollars of the individual tax payers are basically all being funneled into killing. And it's just the truth. And it can it be seen in that amazing, yeah. bizarre... Yeah, that amazing, bizarre incident at Fort Hood, where it all turns around to the point where, I mean, where a person from an Islamic background ends up being in the army, and we don't need to go into that one, because that's, right. that's a real 
you know, that's a real good one because he, that person was even a psychiatrist and a lot of the other people who were killed that day were people who were trained as therapists to go over and help soldiers cope with the difficulty of killing people in Pakistan and Afghanistan. I mean, how much, how many more convolutions of this thing do we have to have before, before people realize that the only thing to do is to stop supporting kill, organized killing on any basis whatsoever. So, so as we're going into night six, um, I think what has happened here is I think that during day six, probably what has gone on is many, many individuals have, have gone in the direction of really going into true pacifism, and then many, many people have gone in the direction of outright killing. Are you comfortable with that possibility? Am because I comfortable I think that, with that possibility? I yeah, because I think I, yeah, because I think that's what gets, what's going to get processed during night six. In other words, in other words, just like me forty years ago, um, you come to a point on this planet where every person has to make a choice about this. We can't just go on acting like this is not going on. You see what I mean? Yeah. And so I think, yeah, I think what night six is going to be about is is if we're. I think we're just. I think. Well, we'll see. When you look at the days and the nights of the underworld, you look at the first couple of days um, to see what the pattern might be. And right when we entered into night six on November 7th, 8th, there was just a, an outbreak of just outrageous violence all over the place in the United States. Isn't that you know? interesting? It, it's, yeah. so fa- it's so fascinating how when you take a look at uh, this kind of information and, and, and everybody is so focused on what's going to happen in 2012 that they almost I know. have no oh, idea man. what to do with the Mayan calendar between now and then. Or, yeah, you, know, you see how, how dangerous it is. Now, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back in to some previous night sixes, which is where we are now, because what we're most interested in is where we are now, to yeah. see how, how those pure, previous um, experiences may resonate with us. And in this case, I'm just going to go into the more recent ones, because those are the ones that, as far as I can see, that it's easy to see how we're being affected by looking at the more re- recent ones. Right. So... So last weekend, as you know, I was teaching with Carl Kalaman, and you were going to be with us, but you weren't able to be there, and it was, you know, we missed you so much. And my piece in my workshop with Kalaman, Kalaman, of course, was covering all the days and nights and the evolution and all that kind of stuff. And then my special piece was to get deeply into the regional underworld. That's what Carl wanted me to do, and that's what I wanted to do myself. Because what Carl shows so well is that the first four underworlds, um, the cellular mammalian, and now, by the way, he's changed some of the names right now, so I didn't give you the terms for the third and fourth inter- underworlds. The third one used to be familial. Now he calls it anthropoid, which I think is better. And then the fourth underworld is the tribal, um, which is two million years long. Now he calls it the human underworld, because that's when hominids came forth. Okay. And what... And what Carl points out, which I just think is just, he's so brilliant, it just knocks me over. And what he pointed out in his latest book, um, which is called The Purposeful Universe, which is fa- fantastic, by the way. And what he pointed out was the first four underworlds um, involved the biological um, development of, of our species. In other words, what, what Carl was saying, and I completely agree with him and any scientist would, is that around 160,000 years ago when we came to day seven of the human underworld, we were essentially evolved biologically. We had an erect spine, a developed cranium, a developed physical body. And, and if you think about it, it's, it's a pretty simple idea. And then what Kalaman says, and I agree with, is then he says that starting around 100,000 years ago, our evolution switched into consciousness because our biological um, evolution was complete. And I think that's really really exciting idea, you know. And and so then what I wanted to do with that was I went, okay, my specialty is consciousness and his specialty is biology, so I want to do consciousness. So what I did and what I'm doing now is I went deeply into the issue of what was going on during the regional underworld, which is 100,000 years of consciousness evolution. And overall, this is called the Paleolithic period, and overall what happened during the Paleolithic period 
is starting about 100,000 years ago. We can see that hominids developed um, consciousness and they developed a sense of connection with the divine. And the reason we can see that is they started burying their dead with red ochre and they started um, developing ritual caves and clans and symbology. And all the way through the regional for 100,000 years, um, we see the increasingly highly developed um, uh, level of consciousness um, during the regional. Then, as I said earlier, what happens during day six of the regional, which is 23,000 to 15,000 years ago, is suddenly we find the global maritime civilization. So during day six, what happened was our, our species actually got to the point, and, and that civilization, by the way, wasn't very technological. Um, we, we certainly can see that people had boats and they sailed all over the place. And the basic idea is that people lived in, in, um, in small cities that were on the edge of the sea, and they did that because that's how they like to live, just like we like to do that today. Everybody wants to live by the water. And what happened was we had about seven or 8,000 years of a civilization that involved seafaring um, cultures that were actually globally connected. And this, this, by the way, is a very, very, um, it, it, there are many, many researchers who believe this is true. And then, of course, dogmatic archaeologists deny this, and, you know, because archaeology tends to operate by the premise that we're always becoming more advanced. Well, this theory is saying, no, 25,000 years ago, we were very advanced, and then something happened. Now, this is the key point. Night six of the regional underworld is 13,800 years ago up to, um, it's actually, it's actually 15,000 to um, 8,000 years ago in that range. And according to my own research in Catastrophobia, my 2001 book, what happened during night six was a series of cataclysms, not only um, on our planet, but also in the solar system excel itself. Um, if we go back around 15,000 years ago, we suddenly start seeing very, very major um, climate changes, and we see the seas rising and, and falling as much as 300 feet over a period of a couple of thousand years. And basically what happened, Hillary, was the global maritime civilization was destroyed. Um, in the middle of this, these climate changes and a series of cataclysms, the most intense one being um, 11,000 to 12,000 years ago. So in our collective mind, we think of that period as being the fall of Atlantis for, for those people who are willing to think about Atlantis. And what goes on with it, of Atlantis is, or the, or the fall of Eden is a very, very complex psychological data bank for us that, one, involves um, being multi-traumatized because the cataclysms were extremely traumatic for our species, and also we went through periods of survivalism that were also extremely um, complex and difficult for us, and then also, if you get into the whole Atlantis issue, you get into a lot of issues that are basically dealing with the possibility that we somehow caused it ourselves. There's a whole lot of Atlantis data based on the idea that we destroyed ourselves because of our hubris or because of, um, you know, um, j just um, basic human nature. Mm -hmm. You with me? Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah. It, it's, yeah. You really have to listen so, to follow along. It's really fascinating when you when you start putting the pieces together. So what you're saying? Yeah. Let me just let me just kind of give this back sure. to you. Is that now that we enter the night six, that we're looking forward probably to uh, cataclysmic sort of earth changes? Is that what you're saying? Well, yeah, what, the way this is working, and at this point, we, we've, um, Kalaman, who is a scientist, a, a biologist, um, has moved now from hypothesis to, um, to theory. And that's extremely important because now we understand this whole thing well enough that we're really, really into a very solid theory. And the idea would be that the night sixes in the past are filled with all kinds of consciousness data that need to come forth now in order for us to change, you know, to kind of change our feelings about a lot of things so that we can go to another level. Is and it, how, that help now, with that? Let's, let's just take a break for there for one second, Barbara. Now, how would somebody, now when somebody just heard you make that statement, how would somebody apply that thought to their everyday life? 
Well, you want a good joke? Go see the latest film, 2012. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> because, see, Have you seen it? No, no, seriously, it? seriously. Hollywood, Hollywood processes a lot of these inner unconsciousness data banks. So basically, sure. now that that kind of movie has come out, um, don't you think that that would affect consciousness because of the fear factor related to what happens in that movie? Sure, but but from another point of view, art happens in order to help us um, experience inner growth, you know? And so isn't it interesting that now that we've entered into that period where the, those great cataclysms occurred during during the regional, isn't it interesting that that film would show up right at this point? Now, yeah, there's also all, all kinds of negative things about that also. Do you think that the uh, the global warming campaign that's put on by the governments of, of the world, uh, what do you think about that whole issue? I know it's kind of off topic, but it's not really. Because, no, it's not off topic at all because yeah. it's it's a very good example of governments and the global elite um, trying to make some money right now. I mean, I've already run into two carbon cre- credit um, millionaires, and Al Gore has made hundreds of millions of dollars off of this stuff. Um, and, of course, climate change is an issue in all of that, but we're getting very, very little real information. And I've dealt with that in a lot of my books, the real data banks here, because the, the, the planet is changing. It's just not changing because of the, the um, fact that they're, you know, for example, Hillary, um, you can't just burn a whole lot of carbon in the lower atmosphere because you'll choke on it, if you know what I mean. So it's not like it isn't obvious that we can't um, continue to pollute the air. But that's not what's causing the planet to change right now what do you think and is I know, causing this whole uh this whole cycle thing well and when you get into the cycles and all of that um we went through now, now another thing going on in the mind calendar movement is the 21st 2012 and in fact that alignment already occurred in 1998 and all of the people focusing on that galactic alignment who know the truth and most of them do are lying in other words, they're getting people to pulling people forward to focus on something that already happened. So what's of interest there would be what did happen in 1998, you know? And what happened in 1998 was when our planet went through a huge geophysical shift, um, when the galactic alignment occurred. And what happened, scientifically speaking, is a bulge occurred at the, the equator of our planet, which is visible by satellites. And the other thing that happened was that the the, um, the uh, land at the um, poles that's being suppressed by ice started rising. It had been um, suppressed and held down since the previous cataclysm 11,500 years ago, and for the first time in 11 or 12,000 years, the land at the poles started actually rising. Okay, now that's really significant, isn't it? Yeah. And yet you you don't hear about that, and that's exactly the mechanism that's probably behind um, a lot of the you know the, the ice melting at the poles and a lot of the other changes on the planet. So my issue with this is I just get really frustrated with lousy scientific data because what is happening is just so exciting. It's just so incredible to look at what's really going on here. You yeah. know that's interesting. From a, from a viewpoint of consciousness, it really changes the way you see your life, the world around you, and your place in it. Because if you're thinking that, you know, there's this whole guilt thing that comes in with us as a human species, thinking that we've caused the, de- you know, we're causing all of this pain and destruction to our planet, and we have to now take responsibility for it and fix it. But in, in truth, it is a cyclic thing, and it's yeah. something that we have been mis, in, you know. Mis- this information has been given to us. We've been, you know, manipulated around the truth around that. That's a very significant reality change for people as well as a different, it's a massive shift in consciousness if people were to become aware of that. Now, I, I you know, I believe in recycling and I believe in taking, you know, accountability for those kinds of things. And I think that is an important thing to, to make a point here that, that that is something that we do need to do. But I see what you're saying about the whole, you know, uh, uh, the fear mindset that's been put into yeah. place by by uh, well, well, the powers that be. Yeah, yeah, Hillary, and of course we need to recycle and, 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 and all that stuff. But it might be nice to start out with point number one, which is the military is the biggest polluter on the planet. 
In, in other words, these small things are used as a distraction to keep people from focusing on the real issue, if you know what I mean. Yeah. But we still, of course, need to do all of these things. And frankly, the way that they deal with us is really abusive, like trying to push people into using flu- fluorescent light bulbs while at the same time they're pushing television sets which suck ten times as much juice as the old-fashioned ones did. Do you see, yeah. you see that yeah. thing? Yeah. And so, so, first of all, we all need to be responsible, and I know I'm meticulous about my garden and recycling and all that kind of stuff, but I refuse to be a dum-dum and not see that no matter what I do, what the military is doing is about a billion times bigger than any step I could possibly make. And how do we change that, Barbara? What do you, what do you think, you know, is it maybe that what we're looking at in the next coming year is a change yeah. in consciousness about our whole viewpoint as a human species towards these kinds of things? Yes, and so the best thing about this is that um, because of what Kalaman has discovered, we now are able to see that an unfolding process is happening on our planet and with us, which is guided toward um, basically a movement into enlightenment, which would be, in my definition, being a peaceful human. Um, I don't need people to sit around in yoga posture all day and have a light bulb in in their third eye. I just need people to stop killing each other. That'll qualify. That's really, it, it's so simple. It's really so simple. It is and a lot simple. Of, you know, I have a very active Facebook page. I, I have a, a lot of people on there, and I post a lot of articles that relate to uh, the swine flu vaccines and all, all kinds of different things that people really need to be a little more educated and, and knowledgeable about before they just follow the herd, so to speak. And when I post those kinds of things, I get all kinds of reactions across the board, and some are positive, and some are like, yeah, let's let everybody know this and you can see a massive you know ripple effect go off as people share that kind of thing and then the other half is people who get really angry and really just disgusted with people like me who Mm -hmm. give this kind of information out and really just you know completely refuse to even look at it so there is a real divide between that but when you post something that says we need to stop killing people you get the same kind of reaction yeah, and, and let's, let's let's look at that. And and to look at that intelligently, we need to look at one more night six, I think, to, just to get a handle on this. Um, the regional underworld is like 100,000 years long. And then another time acceleration started 5,125 years, 25 years back in 3,115 B.C. And that's the development of civilization. So what happened with the calendar and it is showing is that um, civilization became the next step in um, evolution um, after we went through this this long development of, of consciousness during the regional. And so when we look at the national underworld, we want to look at like um, like day six and then night six. And so day six is basically um, like 800 to 1200 A.D. And it's the medieval breakthrough and, and, the, and the renaissance. And then when we go into night six of the national, which is 1223 A.D., through 1617, what we get immediately when it opens up is the Mongol invasion and the Inquisition. So one thing I want to say before I get more deeply into the split that you're describing, that we're Uh experiencing now, one thing I just want to say is there's no way this next year is going to be easy. We are now in the middle of processing the really big issues, okay? Like the next underworld, the planetary underworld, um, night six is 1972 to 1992. And to some people that might look a real, look like a uh, really nice period in history, Jimmy Carter up through Clinton and George Bush Sr. in the middle of it and all that kind of stuff. But if you look at 1972 through 1992 closely, you will see that during that period, America became completely controlled by corporations. Yeah. So it's actually a very dark energy, but it's just that people were going along la 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 with their credit cards, having lots of fun, while the country was being taken over by a very very strong dark force, um, which is now um, at this point breaking up. Okay. So back to what you just said a minute ago, Hillary, about how this feels to each one of us individually. Mm-hmm. We have really come to that cho- choice point. 
we really are there now. Are we going to support peace and the next step of evolution and move beyond things like corporate corporate control or the Inquisition? Um, or are we going to um, valiantly support, you know, Sarah Palin, for example? I mean, the examples that are being put in front of our faces are just remarkable, aren't they? I can't believe that she was on Oprah, and, she, and people really want to know if she's running for president in 2012. <laughs> yeah, it just, and anyway. I can't believe, and I can't believe that Oprah Winfrey would put her on her show. What does that say about Oprah Winfrey? In other words, things are happening right in front of our faces now yeah. that are really enabling us to wake up and decide. Okay, you know, um, you can, if you want to, you can be a killer and go rah 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 for the U.S. military and support the whole um, program and more if you want to. But in the middle of all of this, there are individuals who are really changing and waking up. And from the point of view of evolution, um, if you recall in Mayan code, um, I'm showing a real split at the end of. 2011, and one side of the evolution of the human shows a uh, person in in the military carrying a, um, a, one of those rifles that the AK-47 or whatever, and the other side of the split shows the peaceful human. And I think, you know, some people are going to move in the direction of being the peaceful human, and I think they're going to survive through this this very, very difficult um, period right now. And I think a whole lot of other people are just going to be blowing each other away. And that's exactly what showed up at the beginning of Night Six. Now, Barbara, you're also an astrologer. I and mean, what I find interesting, I just read a, a, a fabulous book uh, by Cal Garrison, The Astrology of 2012 and Beyond. It was really, really good. I highly recommend recommend it to people because uh, it was really a wonderful thing. But you also do the cycles for the new moon and the full moon and how it relates to um, the Mayan calendar. And so what I find interesting in this past year, since this is actually the time we're looking for change and what we've done individually, is all of the solar and lunar eclipses that we experience. We had some really heavy-duty uh, astrological alignments this past year. And so as we move forward towards 2012, um, do you see all of those alignments getting stronger, squaring off in more uh, powerful ways? And, and, I mean, I'm sure it's all related. Yeah, yeah, and where I've been really lucky, I love the way the Spirit guides my life. And so back in 2001, so many of my students were screaming at me to have me email with them or talk to them on the phone or whatever or meet with them that I finally said, okay, you guys, I just can't do this. There's too many people. Um, what I'll do is I'll, I'll create Astro Flash. And I said what I will do is all the way to the end of the Mayan calendar, I will write a monthly new moon report and um, the secret season. And that way you can get the latest thought that, like you and I have on talking on the, on the radio today, would get the latest thought that I have. Okay, so I started it up, and of course it was great fun and all that kind of stuff. And then I discovered Kalamon a couple of years after I was into it. So then what I did starting in 2005 is I combined Kalamon's evolutionary um, uh, th- thesis theory with astrology. Now, to backtrack a little bit, you're probably aware that the Mayan code um, has an appendix with all of the astrological um, transits during the end of the calendar. So yes, first of all, I yes. had already written that. And then I even did that in the Pleiadian, or I think, or in Alchemy of Nine Dimensions. In other words, I've done quite a bit of work on transits during the end of the calendar. But what happened for me, and, and, and of course I've been an astrologer for like 40 years, and I know the predictive power of astrology and the usefulness of it. But what happened for me is when I combined those two techniques together and entire entirely different thing came forth, which was an ability to give astrological information that would help us deal with these different stages. And so as you know from reading it, I'm doing that month by month and season by season. But one of the things that's really, really major um, right now is there's two astrological factors that are really affecting us at this point as we deal with this really deep, dark energy this year. One of them is Saturn square Pluto. 
So right after we went into night six, we had the first um, Saturn square Pluto, and there will be another one in um, January, then another one in July 2010. And um, Saturn-Pluto cycles have to do with the development of very, very um, major structural entities. They have to do with the development of economies and countries and all kinds of just structural stuff. So Saturn conjuncted Pluto um, back in 1982-1980. And that began a whole cycle, um, which, as a matter of fact, is basically the current economic cycle. In other words, the stock market was very low when Saturn conjuncted Pluto, and it started rising at that point. And the world economies have been building um, very aggressively and very strongly since 1982-83. But then what happened was when Saturn came to an opposition to Pluto, which the opposition is always where the energy breaks. It's it's at the most intense point, and it also breaks the most intensely. That was 2001, 2002. So we know what happened at that point, at least in the United States. 9-11 occurred, and it basically put a time lock on the um, development of of the United States. And at that point, the United States entered into full-bore security and militarism which, according to my world, is no solution. (laughs) This is just no, this is not a solution. So now that we have come to the upper square, there's two squares. There's there's the first square, which was 93, 1993. Then now we're at the upper square, and what's going to happen is all of this buildup of the um, corporate and militaristic economy is going to be destroyed this year. It's just I think like, I just heard about half my listeners jumping up and down saying yes. I know, I know they're jumping at it. And what I'd like people to register, because we're going to have to get real about this. We also had a day five, which was akin to 2000. We had a, actually night five, which is akin to 2007 and 2008. And what happened at that point was the economic structure um, started to collapse and it started to break apart. And then, as you know, We've been pulling ourselves back together since that point. Well, now the destruction comes. And okay, okay. If, so I'm sorry. Go ahead. Well, and if you look at what the American economy is is being used for, which is destroying other people all over the planet, uh-huh. look, I don't want to live through this either. But how can you not support the destruction of such an such an evil entity on the planet? It's true. I mean, I have to say, I, and, you know, we have about we have about eight minutes left in the show, and what I'd like yeah. to do now is just kind of give people some practical advice as to how to move through this. And I think getting out of debt is really one of the wisest choices you could make right now. Is taking a look at where you are financially and doing everything in your power to significantly reduce or completely get out of debt and stop living in the debt cycle. I think I, this is my own personal opinion, and, I, and Barbara, I, you know, I would appreciate your comments too, but I really think that the debt cycle is one of the ways that people, uh, especially in the United States, have been controlled and kept in this, you know, we're kind of like the worker ants that kind of keep going and keep going and feed the other systems. So as long as the Americans are buying and consumers and, you know, they had Christmas stuff out where I live at Halloween time. And so the Christmas season, you're, you're seeing commercials up already, you're seeing stores decorated, you know, several Several week, you know, a few weeks back, and people are really, really, I, I think, waking up to not being consumers anymore and realizing that, uh, and I hope that they realize this year coming, that in doing so, they're really making the point that we are no longer going to support this kind of system. You know, buy yeah. what you need, maintain your life, what you need to do, but really take a look at how spending and buying and consumerism has taken over the planet and what That's it right. really is. Um, That's right. And so I think getting out of debt is really, really important for people. It's one of the reasons I wrote my book, Money Matters for Mind, Body, and Spirit, because I had gone through uh, a year process of rehabbing my financial life and the empowerment of being debt-free, not having to owe money, is really, really an incredible place to be. So besides getting out of debt, what would you recommend for people as we kind of close the show in the last five minutes or so? What can they do on a personal, individual level to to counter-affect some of the more negative aspects of this. 
And I, I'd just like to go back to that for one moment because, of course, I was screaming at people to get out of debt two or three years ago. But the thing for people to understand is actually we're doing really well because the breakdown in 2007 was a huge wake-up call for a whole bunch of people, and a whole bunch of people actually have gotten out of debt. And being out of debt equals freedom. The other thing that equals freedom for, for people, especially living in the United States, is the issue of having control over their own um, living space. And so one of the things that's going to be very important during night six, and this is actually going to ultimately be a very positive experience, is that people have got to start moving in together now, and they've got to start working together to cope with their reality. Like I just read a really interesting study about how Asians were doing in the United States um, during the financial collapse during the last couple of years. And Asians worked so well together in a group that when everything started to hit, they just moved in together, and if they had one or two wage earners in a, in a group living in a house, that was fine because then everybody else could do everything else you have to do in order to stay alive. So we really need to move into that communal level of sharing now, and I think people are really going to have a very positive experience with this. A lot of people are already doing it already, and I'm suggesting that you do it even more aggressively and intentionally. Mm. And you know. so what about growing our own food? And, you know, because we started a garden a couple years ago, yeah, which was really stuff, of positive. Part of that. Yeah, yeah, if you have a bunch of people who are grouped together in, in a housing situation, then while one person goes to work, the other person could tend the garden. So, so we just need to move back to that issue of being groups because being groups together is, is what is going to enable us to hold our freedom. Because the whole system is based on the idea that you're going to go out shopping and then everybody's going to be able to collect your taxes and then you're going to pay your taxes and then ultimately all of that money is being funneled right into killing. It's really, it's, it's really, it, it, yeah. it's really eye-opening. It's really eye-opening, and it, it really changes your world when you start to look at things from this perspective. Um, so, Barbara, uh, for people to get in touch with you, um, your website. Everybody who's listening is Hand Clow yeah. C L O W two thousand and twelve. Dot com if you're interested. I also post her uh, astrology newsletters on my website as well as on my Facebook page, and I also put it in my weekly newsletter that goes out. Um, so you, there's lots of ways to find it. And uh, Barbara, now you're taking a sabbatical for 2010, correct? Yes, I am, and I think it's so interesting the way you and I started this discussion with your strong feeling that you have to just slow down and regroup right now. Um, I'm Jerry and I, I'm my husband and I, and we have two children. Um, we're doing the same thing. We're really grouping our family together in a really close and intimate way because this is just going to be, this is going to fly so fast, you haven't seen anything yet. And so we need to pull back right now. I'm also contacting a whole bunch of high flyer um, consciousness teacher friends of mine and saying, hey, honor that piece in you that knows you need to stop now. And you'd really be amazed at how many people aren't going to teach this year. I just decided that. But then I started hearing from other teacher friends of mine who just said, I don't know what's going on here, but I'm pulling back. Well, one good reason to pull back is I don't even think anybody's going to be able to make it to a workshop anyway. Well, <laughs> in in it, my it, case, it, I'm not going away. I'm still on Astro Flash. And by the way, what the other thing I'm doing to compensate for not teaching, I'm in deep meditation um, every day now with everybody that's ever encountered me um, in this lifetime. I, you know, it's funny that you mentioned that uh, pulling back again because, you know, even as I'm kind of just getting started and, you know, I've been doing this for a while, but, you know, I feel like I'm still in the budding stages of my career, uh, I feel the same pull to pull back. Mm -hmm. In fact, I'm supposed to be starting a new book, and I just – just today, I finally, you know, really conceptualized the idea of the book and everything and decided. But it's really funny. It's this constant hibernation feeling of just retreat, just retreat. Yeah. So I'm going to have to sit with that for a while and see what's going on. But I think it has a lot to do with what you're ta you were talking about today over this last hour. And, well, uh, and speaking of what you do and what I do on Astro Flash, um, one of the kind of wonderful things about this period is that pulling back and deep going into deep contemplation doesn't involve not communicating. And that's one of the nice things about the galactic underworld, isn't it? It's been a, it's been a evolving communication system that's been gradually weaving us all together. And so we come to the last minute of the show, and what I've been doing lately with my guests is, in the last minute, I'm asking you to 
give everybody who's listening your message for what you want to ripple out over the airwaves across the planet um, and uh, affecting everybody's consciousness who's listening right now. What is your message for everyone who's listening? My message is that the world tree is, an, is emanating waves of consciousness that are driving us through a process um, that is taking us to a very high level of consciousness. And if you just slow down and tune in, you'll discover that the greatest wave is love. And the love vibrations in the middle of this period are awesome. And so just be with love. That's Barbara Hanclaw, everybody. Thanks so much for joining us. You can listen to this archive immediately after the show, and it will be posted there. Uh, and I just want to say I'm very grateful for all of you who tune in and listen to these shows. It's my intention with this radio show to reach people with information that helps to elevate consciousness one show at a time. I'm Hillary Ramo, everybody. Thanks so much for tuning in. Until next time, namaste.